today because our general manager, our real general manager, is very passionate about the subject and she was very keen to do the presentation herself. But like many of our staff, she's actually in the US for the Peak Organ Donation Conference, World, Con World Congress. Um, so I was just here to answer any questions and just to provide a point of clarity. It's my Apple Watch, sorry. Um, just any, any points of clarity. One of the things I did want to pick up on, Rob said that, you know, when a family has, uh, when a donor has registered no on the register, we always still approach a family. And we have written into our, our Healing Tissue Act that if there is a registered no, that family can override that registered no. If there have been, if there's been a more recent conversation where they have said, look, we really, he really wanted, she really wanted to do this, we absolutely, so, uh, we absolutely want them to be an organ donor. So we have that capacity now to um, correct an uh, historical no um, and, and make donation happen. Um, and one of the things I think we all need to be very clear on is that one donor can save up to seven lives and improve lives of many more people through tissue donation. The gift of sight, you know, um, reconstruction of, of joints, um, tendon transfers, many of our sports people would benefit from deceased donation of um, musculoskeletal lesion tissue. So um, it, the really important take home message that Rob has emphasised is it will come down to the family. Um, we, we um, most families, 80% of families will say yes if their um, loved one is registered and they have had a conversation with their loved one. Very happy to say yes. There are, will be 20% of families who um, are just done by the time they get to that conversation. They're so tired, their loved one's been in intensive care. The worst possible thing has happened, um, but the majority of families will say yes. And so it's really important that if you are a registered donor or to register your wishes, be that a yes or a no, and make sure your family know about that because it makes their lives so much easier when they find themselves in that really difficult but really rare position. Only 2% of deaths in hospital um, can be potential organ donors. So it is a really rare event. So we want to optimise um, the, the, the um, consent rate. So we've done a lot of work in this space over the last 10 years. The um, best practice guideline, the national best practice guideline is implemented in New South Wales. We meet a lot of the KPIs and exceed them more so than any other jurisdiction, but we still would like to see an improvement in our consent rate because that's the thing that will make a difference to the number of organ donors and the number of life-saving transplants we have. So that's really my big message for today. And Danielle's very keen to come and give you a more detailed message um, at the next meeting. So thanks for taking